This section will cover the self-erection assembly process. For this process, we will extend the crawlers, erect the gantry, and install the counterweight. But before starting, first confirm the following items. First, we will place the LMI into setup mode by pushing the setup icon on the LMI and hold it for three seconds. This is the icon with a picture showing the boom apart. Then we will raise the gantry from the transport position up to the working position. Move the gantry cylinder control switch inside the cab to the up position. Make sure to take up excess boom cable slack as needed to keep the cable tight on the drum. After the gantry is fully raised, install tension member locking pins, then raise the boom. Now we will extend the crawler frames. It's important to note that the crawler frames should only be extended or retracted with all counterweights removed. To extend the crawlers, you'll need to pull the retaining pins and swing the four extension axles out 90 degrees toward the outside so that they're parallel with the axles. The axles will provide support for the track frames after they've been extended into the working position. Remove lock pins for the extension axles from the crawler frame and place them into the foot side of extension axles. The bracket will hold the extension axles in the extended position. Remove the shims for adjusting the clearance between the crawlers and axles. Remove the locking pins from the four crawler frame slide arms. Operate the extension switch located on the left side near the operator seat to extend the crawler frames out to the working position. Please note that the machine will take the path of least resistance and may move far right or left depending on ground conditions. It may become necessary to travel a short distance forward or backward slowly while extending the crawler frames. Make sure to install hairpin keepers in all four locking pins to hold them in place. Install the shims in between the crawler frame and axle to take up the extra clearance. It may be necessary to swing the machine and shift the weight to install all shims. We will now install the boom point section onto the boom base section. Use the lugs on the boom base section to position the boom point section as needed for installation. First, track the machine to the point section. Then attach the point to the boom base section, installing top connecting pins first. Install proper guide cables for boom base and tip only. Each of the guide cables are stamped with an ID number. The guy line arrangement chart for this and all guy line arrangements are on a chart that is kept in the cab and also in the operations and maintenance manual. Raise the boom hoist to align the bottom holes and install the double taper pins. The double taper pins are needed for a safer disassembly of the boom. Lower the boom to remove tension on the upper spreader. Once this is complete, remove the connecting pins from the spreader to the base. Then raise the spreader to clear the brackets and install the pins on the spreader and secure them with the locking pins. Once again, lower the guide and secure them with the locking pins. We're now ready to install the load block on the machine. Reeve the hook block using the front drum. Keep a tight pull on the wire rope as the drum is rotating to prevent the wire rope from becoming loose on the drum. Run the cable through the right-handed idler sheave and down to the point sheaves. The reeving diagrams are shown in the operation and maintenance manual. For this demonstration, we will reeve this machine with two-part line on the main load block. Install the anti-two-block weight on the cable after reeving the block. Then install the wedge socket and mount onto the boom tip. Note the decal on the point section illustrating the proper mounting of the wedge socket to the boom point. We will now connect the anti-two-block system. Install the anti-two-block limit switch to the boom tip. Run the anti-two block cable from the cable reel to the tip and secure it to the boom mounting bracket. Connect the wires for the anti-two block system at the limit switch and complete the circuit by making the final connection at the reel. Now pull the limit switch by hand and make sure the ATB or hook over hoist trouble code on the LMI is discontinued. Secure loose cable using brackets. Now boom up to clear the block from the ground. We should now set the LMI to our present crane configuration. Set up the LMI by first pressing the menu icon while the main screen is displayed. 
On the menu screen, select the setting with the up-down arrow icon. The crane attachment screen appears. Then, press the 123 icon. Next, select the self-removal mode icon. The operation selection screen is displayed. Select the car body weight removal mode. The number parts of line screen will appear. Next, touch the zero icon. Using the keypad, enter the two parts of line and press the OK icon. The screen appears showing the selected items. If these are verified, press the OK icon. After all the settings and input are complete, the main screen will appear. The settings are displayed on the left part of the screen. It's important that you check all your settings before continuing. The crane is now ready for operation. We're now ready to install the car body weights onto the machine. For easier installation, it's important that you place the crane on a firm and level ground. Car body weights are two weights installed on the front and rear of the main frame and each weighs 15,900 pounds. Lift the car body weights and install them by hooking them with the car body brackets. After the car body weights have been installed, we should now set the LMI to our present crane configuration. Set up the LMI by first pressing the menu icon while the main screen is displayed. On the menu screen, select the setting with the up-down arrow icon. The crane attachment screen appears. Press the 123 icon. Next, select the self-removal mode icon. The operation selection screen is displayed. Select the counterweight weight removal mode. The number parts of line screen will appear. Next, touch the zero icon. Using the keypad, enter the two parts of line and press the OK icon. The screen appears showing the selected items. After these are verified, press the OK icon. After all the settings and input are complete, the main screen will appear. The settings are displayed on the left part of the screen. It's important that you check all your settings before continuing. The crane is now ready for operation. At this point, use the crane to lay out all additional boom inserts that the job requires. For this demo, we will add a 20-foot boom insert, main hook, load ball, and an auxiliary sheave. First, we'll lay out the 20-foot insert onto 4x4 blocks. Make sure to install one boom roller per boom insert. We're now ready to assemble the counterweight tray. Set the counterweight tray on plywood type material on firm level ground. We'll install the lifting links. These will remain on the counterweight tray in the transport position. After installed, raise the lifting links into the working position and install the locking pins. Use suitable nylon straps to stack each of the 12,700 pound weights. Place each counterweight in their position and pin each of the counterweight sections together. This assembly will consist of two weights on each side of the counterweight base. We're now ready to install the counterweight assembly onto the rear of the machine. Position the rear of the machine over the counterweight assembly. Turn the ignition switch to the off position and connect the counterweight control box to the receptacle located on the right-hand side of the machine. Using the counterweight control box, turn the engine on. Use the toggle switch to raise the RPM. On the rear of the machine, unpin the bottom of each of the connector links, allowing them to slide down into position. Connect each of the connector links to the lifting links on the counterweight tray. Pull the retaining pins, and using the extension bar tool, turn the mounting pins to the open position. Activate both left and right hand control switches to the up position and make adjustments as needed to keep the counterweight assembly level as it's being lifted. Stand clear of the counterweight assembly during this lifting procedure. After the counterweight assembly is completely raised, use the extension bar tool to insert the mounting pins and replace the retaining pins. Place the extension bar tool into the mounting location on the counterweight tray. Use the control box to retract the lifting cylinders completely. Using the counterweight control box, turn off the engine. Now, disconnect the counterweight lifting control box from the receptacle. We're now ready to install the additional boom section. Lower the point section near the last boom section and place the block on the ground. Place the LMI back into the setup mode. Disconnect wire rope and spool up the wire rope to the drum and secure it in place. 
lower the boom tip to the ground. Then raise the spreader guide brackets on the boom base. Lower the spreader until it slides into the brackets on the boom base. Do not allow the boom cable to become excessively loose or become loose on the drum. Pin the lower spreader to the boom base mounting bracket. Raise the boom hoist cable until the tension is off of the four boom connector pins. Next, make sure to disconnect the anti-two block cables and spool the cable up on the reel. First, remove the two lower double taper pins. These pins are designed to be removed while standing safely outside of the boom. Then position 4x4 blocks under the boom point and lower to the ground. Disconnect the guide cables off of the spreader, then remove the two top boom connecting pins. Slowly back the machine away from the boom tip. Use the lugs on the boom base section to position the boom tip onto the last boom insert. Install the four boom connecting pins. Next, you'll need to track the machine to the first insert and align the base to the insert. Install the top connecting pins. Connect all guy lines. The guy line arrangement chart is located in the cab or in the operations and maintenance manual. Then raise the boom hoist to align the bottom holes. Install the double tapered pins. Lower the boom to remove tension on the upper spreader. Once this is complete, remove the connecting pins from the spreader to the base. Then raise the spreader to clear the brackets. Once again, install the pins on the spreader, lower the guides, and secure them with the locking pins. At this point, we will install the auxiliary sheave. Lower the boom and track the machine lining up the top of the auxiliary sheave. Insert the top connecting pin. Boom up to align the bottom holes and insert the bottom connecting pin. Using the front drum for the main block, reeve the block with whatever parts of line are required for the job. For this demo, we will use four parts of line for the main block. For the load ball, use the rear drum, which will use one part of line on the auxiliary sheave. First, connect the anti-two block weights and limit switches to the tip and the auxiliary sheave. The donut style weight is for the ball and the other weight is for the block. Once again, connect the anti-two block cable to the limit switches and complete the connection at the reel. Before operating, confirm that all guy cable cotter pins are properly bent and all boom pins are installed and keeper pins are in place. And make sure the boom is free of any pins, tools, or loose articles. Set up the LMI by first pressing the menu icon while the menu screen is displayed. On the menu screen, select the setting with the up-down arrow icon. The crane attachment screen appears. The set of icons will need to be configured in this order. Select the crane icon. Select the STD weight, 60 boom. Aux sheave. Next, select the main hook number one and press use. Then select the auxiliary hook number two. Press use. The selection is the number parts of line screen. Next, for the number one hook, touch the zero icon. Using the keypad, enter the four parts of line. Next, for the number two hook, touch the zero icon. Using the keypad, enter the one part of line and press the OK icon. The screen appears showing the selected items. If these are verified, press the OK icon. After all the settings and input are complete, the screen returns to the crane configuration screen. The settings are displayed on the left part of the screen. It's important that you check all your settings before continuing. Now pull the limit switches for the ATB system on the main hook and on the load ball and confirm that the fault codes on the LMI are eliminated. The out of angle should be the only code remaining. We're now ready to boom the machine up into the working position. After the machine has reached the working radius, all fault codes on the LMI should be eliminated. Double check to make sure that the anti-2 block is working on the main hook and also on the load ball. Also check that the high boom angle kickouts are working properly. In this configuration, the high boom angle should kick out at 82 degrees. Now the machine is ready for operation.